you this evening to our evening service at the New Life in Christ Jesus Church. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Thank you. We also welcome those who is watching this broadcast. Thank you also for being here with us. And we pray that um, this service tonight will be a blessing to each of us in Jesus name. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. Well, we're going to open up in prayer in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, Father, for who you are. And we thank you, Father, for everything that you have done, continue to do in each of our lives. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you speak to us. Father, use tonight, Pastor Larry, as your instrument, as your vessel, Lord God, on behalf of your people. You know that every situation that what your people are going through, every circumstances that your people are facing. And we thank you, Father, that you are bigger and greater of any circumstances. And Father, we thank you for it. And Father, we lift unto you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, this service this evening. And we thank you, Father, for your presence, for your anointing in this place. It's because you are anointing, burden removing, yoke destroying, power of God let manifest in this place. And Father, we ask you, Lord God, through the work of the Holy Spirit, touch every person who is here tonight. And those who is watching this broadcast, touch your people. Let your people never be the same. Supernatural transformation, hallelujah, will manifest in your people's lives. Father, we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, God bless you. Again, we thank you so much for being with us. And we know that as the word of God is going to go forward, it will minister into each of our hearts. See, faith is common by hearing, right? When we listen and hear the word of God, we receive impartation. But you open your heart. Open your heart to receive that impartation. The truth, right? So because when we know the truth, when we receive the word of God, and the word of God can bring the understanding, revelation, right? And then the truth, the spirit of truth. Let the spirit of truth will manifest in each of our lives. Amen. Because we can be so wise in our own eyes. But what God's word declare? And what how the Lord wants you to deal with some situations and some situations and circumstances, I will say, right? So see the Bible is the truth. And it's like a life map for our lives. Amen? So when we facing something in our life, we need to address and go to before our Heavenly Father through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and ask to reveal us what decision that He can help us to make. Amen? So because some situations cannot be resolved without the help of the Lord. Amen. So, and He will intervene in your life. And let's say you might make some mistake in your life and you realize but it was too late when you already made this mistake. Well, see, God He is not changed because of our mistakes or what we've been done. But when we acknowledge our mistakes or we acknowledge our sins, in the book of First John 1 and 9, he said in his word, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
So when we acknowledge mistakes, when we acknowledge our sins and say, Father, forgive me of this sin. See, and this is where the promise is, because his word is truth. And this is where the promise is, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, but we do have to acknowledge that. Because if we don't acknowledge that, we are right in our own eyes. But what the Lord says about what you have done or did, because our ways should be pleasing to Him. And when it's pleasing to Him, God will reward everyone who is diligently seeking Him. Because if we're diligently seeking Him and abide in Him, and He abide in us, we become one. And when we become one, the works what Jesus Christ did in this earth, that we should do also. That's His word. Amen. And that's His promise. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is not changed. Times that we live, it might be change. Cultures change. Right? Countries change. People move from one country <laughs> to another culturally. But God is not changed. And His word is not changed. Amen. So Pastor Larry is here. He's going to be ministering to us. So just open your spirit. Open your heart to receive that spiritual food for tonight that God has for us. Amen. In Jesus' name. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you and we praise you and we give you glory for what you're going to do tonight in this service. Father, I release the anointing now in the name of Jesus. I release the anointing of your presence right now. And Father, I thank you that your word will work as we work the word. You are not slack concerning your promises. You will honor your word as we hold fast to your word. You will meet every need to everyone under the sound of my voice as they release their faith and believe. God, I believe that you are a miracle worker. Now, Father, I ask you that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a red writer to write your word upon the heart upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're my refuge, you're my rock, 
You're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when my light goes dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. You're my joy, you're my peace. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge, you're my rock. You're the one I depend on. And you're the road to hope when my light goes dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. Stars, you are my bright and shining star. You gave me sight that I might see the kind of man that I should be. You gave me God to set me free, Almighty God. comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock. You're the one I depend on. And you're the road to hope when my light goes dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. You're my joy. baptism in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So now that we believe that everyone that wanted to be baptized are baptized, so we're going to go now into, we're going to introduce, we're going to go to the introduction to the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, and I believe that as we get into this area, 
we're going to uh, experience, we're going to see what what God, what the Holy, what is His purpose, Amen, and how it will benefit us, Amen, to uh, learn more about the Holy Spirit and His functions, Amen. So we're going to start off today about on uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter twelve and verse number one. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 1 is going to be our starting point for this lesson today. Amen. And the Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. Now this is God saying, this, this is the word of God. Amen. I will not have you ignorant. Amen. See, God wants us to under, have a knowledge of the Holy Spirit and his functions, his gifts, his, the calling. Amen. God wants us to have a, 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 a knowledge of who the Holy Spirit is and his purpose. Amen. So now let's look. Jesus left... Jesus left his disciples with a very uh, important responsibility to extend the gospel message. Jesus left, he, he, when Jesus left earth, he gave the disciples a charge. Amen. He gave them a charge. And that charge was to take the message to the ends of the earth. Amen. Amen. But you, you know you can't do it in your own in your own natural strength. You know you're going to need the power of God to do this. Amen. He said the power of the Holy Spirit will help you, will help them to take care of this task. Amen. So when God is preparing us to to go to the nations, but He doesn't want you to think that you have to go alone. He doesn't want you to think that you have to uh, 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 accomplish this in your own strength. Amen. That's why he tells us in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse number 8. Acts, chapter 1, verse number 8. You want to turn there, you're welcome to do so. And it says, but ye shall receive power. Amen. See, why do you need power? You need the power so you can demonstrate the kingdom of God. You need the power to demonstrate the kingdom of God. Amen. So, and now, that just, now, just because that's there, that means that that's a responsibility to come with that now. That means you've got to spend time seeking the face of God. You got to spend time on your face praying and seeking them and crying out to God. Amen. And let me tell you something. This here is so important. Souls and restoration of the hearts of people has to be your main focus. Winning the lost souls. A hunger and a thirst for souls. Amen. You talking about I'm, you, you're talking about a re, a, a releasing the, the power of God. Then get, develop a hunger for souls. Amen? For souls. You'll see, the, hand, you'll see the, the power of God and the hand of God resting upon you like never before. Amen? So he said now, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be a witness unto me. Amen? Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the other parts of the earth. Amen. See, God gave the Holy Spirit to the disciples as a, as a helper, as a comforter, as a strengthener, as a paraclete. Amen. As a counselor. Amen. And we also know him as the comforter. Amen. The comforter, because that's that's what that's what that's who he is. Amen. So when Jesus when when Jesus did not leave his followers with such a a great responsibility without giving them the ability to fulfill the the challenge that was before them, he did not give them this calling, and then did and then put the whole burden on their shoulders. No, that's not what Jesus did. That's not what Jesus did. Amen. Jesus not, not only gave them the, the calling to go to the nations, but he also gave them the power through the gift of the Holy Spirit to carry out the assignment 
by going to the nation. You can't do it in your own strength. You can't go to these other countries and, and expect and expect to, to do what God wants you to do when you don't know who 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 the, the power that's in you. You got to understand that the power that's in you is the Holy Spirit, which is also called the Holy Ghost. Amen. Which is also the one that empowers you to carry out your assignment. Amen. So when I look at this, when I look at this, I see, I see God, I see God is giving us a great responsibility without, and see, now he's not giving us responsibility without giving us the ability to fulfill the, the, the calling. Amen. Spiritual gifts are, are supernatural ability even by the Holy Ghost, given by the Holy Ghost. I'm going to say that again. Spiritual gifts are supernatural abilities given by the Holy Spirit. Amen. To empower believers to be effective in witnessing and reaching the hurting and the lost people of the world. Amen. Amen. So now when we when we when we when we say God, I don't I I don't I don't understand it all, but but if, but if that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. Amen. See, the subject the Holy Spirit gives. The, this subject on the on the spiritual gifts is going to be one of the basic teachings that we're going to need to carry out the assignment. Remember, remember the gifts of the remember the gifts was one of the was one of which Paul taught in the early church. Amen. Paul was teaching on this in the early church. And that's why we went, that's why we went to uh that's why we went to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. Because in verse number one, notice what he said again. Amen. Notice what he said again in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number one. He said, now concerning spiritual gifts. Now, now, now this is Paul talking. He said, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. Now listen to how he, now listen to how Paul talking to the, the, his, his fellow believers. His fellow, his followers. Amen. Those that are following Christ. No, they told him. He said, "Now concerning spiritual gift, brother, he said, I will not have you ignorant. I will not have you ignorant. Amen. Now that's powerful. Amen. That's powerful. But that's straight to the point. See, in this lesson, Amen. The subject of the spiritual gifts. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna see, we're gonna see what God." Has in store for us. Following and, and following in this chapter, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we, we will con, we will concern we will we will. I'm gonna say it like this. We're gonna experience the spirit of the or you might say the the supernatural gifts of the spirit, which are available to all believers. How many of you want to experience the gifts? Amen. Well, then you're gonna. There's a. There's a. That, that, then God's gonna require something of you. God's gonna require something of you. Amen. If you want what God wants, then God wants something from you. What do God want from you? He wants your. He wants you. He wants your. Uh, oh my God. He wants your surrendered heart. That's all he wants from you. He wants your surrendered heart. Amen. Are you ready to surrender? Are you ready to give your all to the to the name to to the to, to for the cause of the the, the hurting people of the world? Are you ready to, to, to sow your life into the ministry of God as a seed? In other words, are you ready to die to yourself and allow the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to come alive on the inside of you? This is what God is asking of us. Amen. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Amen. Yet not I, but Christ live within me. Galatians two twenty. Amen. So Paul, he, he he knows he knows how to he knows how to to set the things in order. Amen. According to the word. Amen. So guidelines who also will be given to help you to discover your own gifts and calling through this lesson that we that we're about to teach. Amen. You're going to be given information so that you can discover your own gifts and callings. Amen. Now, how many of you want to understand, how many of you want to discover your gifts and your callings? 
then you need to pay close attention to what we're going to be talking about these next few weeks. Amen. These next few weeks, because it's going to it's going to open up. It's going to open up the scriptures. It's going to and it's going to cause you to have a a, a heart that is uh, my God. That is it, it's going to cause you to be a a yielded vessel. If you want more of God, then you want God. God going to require something of you. Amen. He's going to require something of you. He wants you to become a yielded vessel. A yielded vessel. Amen. Glory to God. So what are spiritual gifts? What are spiritual gifts? The word spiritual means characterized as or controlled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. A gift is something freely given from one person to another. Amen. Amen. We understand that a gift is not something that you purchase. A gift is something that is given. And that's what God wants us to understand about the spiritual gifts. They are already they, they, they are gifts that have been given. Amen. And so we see now that uh, a spirit a spiritual gift is a supernatural ability given by the Holy Spirit. It's a supernatural ability given by the Holy Spirit to be to a believer. Now, if you're a believer, now I'm talking to you. But if you're not a believer, then uh, we can solve, we can, we can make that correction very, very quickly. Amen. By introducing you to the Lord Jesus Christ and you open up your heart and you allow him to come into your heart by faith. Amen. So spiritual gifts are a supernatural ability given by the Holy Spirit, which was given by Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. And it's given to the believers to minister as part of the body of Christ. See, when you yield, when you when you become a yielded vessel and you receive the, the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking other tongues, now God wants you to understand the purpose of the gift that you have received. And that's what we're going to be discussing for the next few weeks. Amen. The gift that came with the baptism in the Holy Spirit so that you can understand the because you see you probably have so many gifts operating in you right now and you probably not even understand what's going on like sometimes when I'm when I'm when I'm ministering to someone or when I'm talking to someone all of a sudden God takes my mind off of the person per se and it bright it, 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 it brings me into the spirit and he began to talk to me concerning that person see that's the gift of discerning that's in the manifestation. Or you might call it the word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. Amen. That's in the manifestation. Glory to God. See, you, when you understand the gifts, when you understand how they function, then you'll understand which one you're operating in. You will. It's very, very important that you do that because, you see, you might be, you, God might want to use you in some in certain area, that, and then when he began to deal with your heart, he don't want you to be afraid to to act on what he's speaking to you, or what he's saying to you, or what he's doing in you, he wants you to be—he wants you to be a, a, a willing vessel, a willing vessel. See, there's a difference between the gift and the Holy Spirit, and the gifts. Let me say it again: there's a difference between the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gifts. Amen. The Holy Spirit. The whole, the whole, the Holy Spirit. Okay, okay, let's say it like this: the gift of the Holy Spirit occur when on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, Amen. Acts chapter two, when the when the when the when the, when the Holy Spirit came in answer to the promise that was given by Jesus. And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Jesus answered that, and now we see the fulfillment of that coming to pass. We can also we also see that it was mentioned in the book of Luke, chapter twenty-four, verse number forty-nine. Amen. About the promise. Well, the promise is the promise is it's been given. The promise is, God is not taking the promise back. But notice what it said right here in John chapter fourteen. I'm going to turn my Bible to John chapter fourteen. 
And we're going to read verse number 16 through verse 16 and 17. John chapter 14. Are y'all still here? Good. Now notice what it said right in verse 16 and 17. It said, And I will pray the Father, and he, talking about the Father, shall give you another comforter, another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Verse number 17, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him, not neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be where? In you. And shall be in you. So the gift of the Holy Spirit has already been given in answer to the promise. Gift of the Holy Spirit are supernatural abilities. The gift of the Holy Spirit are supernatural abilities. Amen. The Holy Spirit given... The Holy Spirit gives believers. I'll put you a lesson right there on the chair. The, the, amen. Okay, so now the gift of the Holy Spirit is a supernatural ability of the whole of the Holy Spirit given believers to enable effective witness, to be an effective witness. Because without the Holy Spirit, without the anointing, without the, 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 the power, without God's help, you will never be effective out on the battlefield. You ever try, you know, you ever, when, when we, remember we used to go door, door knock, knocking on doors all the time? And, and, and if, you didn't, if, if you wasn't being led by the Spirit when you're talking to the people, amen, you will not, you will not be effective. But when you was being led by the Spirit, when you talk to these people, you notice how 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 they were able to receive from you, and how they was, and then not only were they able to receive from you, uh, you was able to, to minister to them. Amen. You was able to minister to them, and and then on top of that, they were so glad that you came because you came with an encouraging word. You didn't come beating them down, talking about talking about them. You came with compassion. Amen. And so when we when we under, when we can understand that we can see that we can see that the gifts of God is is ready to be released in 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 the world through you now. The gifts of all the, the gifts are in you. Amen. So now let's look right here. Look right here. He said the gift of the Holy Spirit has already been given in answer to the promise. Gift of the Holy Spirit are a soup. The gifts of the gifts. Now this is here. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Are a supernatural ability the Holy Spirit gives believers. It's a supernatural ability that the Holy Spirit gives believers. Amen. To be effective. Now look at Mark chapter 16, verse number 20. I, this is one of my scriptures here. I didn't write it, but this is one of mine. <laughs> Amen. So notice what it said, verse number 20 said. And they went forth and preached everywhere. And I get this. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Now, how, how, how did the people know what was going on? The Lord confirmed the word that they preached with signs following. And that's what happened when we go to different nations. That's why we have to fast and pray before we go to these places. Because you see, if we don't give God that time in prayer, then when we get out there, there's nothing going to happen. But if you give God that time in prayer through fasting and praying, you're going to see that God's going to show up. And he's going to show himself strong on behalf of those people. Because see, he wants to meet minister to those people. Amen. He wants to minister to them. That's the whole purpose that he gave the Holy Ghost so that you could be a great that you could be a great witness for him. Amen. So the gifts 
and talents. There are different between there, 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 there is a difference between spiritual gifts and natural talents. See, there's some people, some people that's so gifted that the that you think they operate by the gift of the Holy Spirit when it's just natural talent that they have learned how to operate it. They learn that they learn by spending time studying or spending time with different other with other people of of practicing and watching other people and so they begin to do it themselves until they develop a talent in doing so. And since, and, and this is what this is what's so so bad about that. A lot of people are being deceived because they thinking that it's the Holy Spirit when it's just someone operating from their talents. Like it's a show. And this is and you're right, just like a show, because this is this is in places like this, this is where you see all those those, those club lights. Because they they know, they learn how to how to capture the attention of the people, and so now they're using that to glean the people. I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving you what I what I what I what I what I what I understand, what I what I see here in my spirit, in my heart, and what I what I what the way God has directed me. I, I can't be. I, I I got to give it as He gave it to me. I can't shun it. I can't. I got, I got to give it as He gave it to me because if I don't, it's not going to benefit no one. It's not going to benefit anyone. Amen. So spiritual gifts is a supernatural ability which uh, which did not come by inheritance or training. So we didn't we didn't receive this by inheritance. We didn't receive this by by some kind of training. Our parents didn't give us these spiritual gifts. They came from God. They came from God, Amen. No matter how your how gifted and talented your 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 family were, they did not give you these gifts. These gifts came from God, Amen. It is a supernatural ability that was given by the Holy Spirit. For what purpose? To be a witness throughout the earth. See, that's the reason why. That's the reason why God gave the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember what he said in, in, uh, in John chapter, no, not John, uh, Mark chapter 16, verse number 15. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. See, without the, the leading and without the, and without the gift of the Holy Spirit, you will not be able to do that because you might go, but you, you wind up running for your life because you're going to meet a lot of devils out there, a whole lot. And, and, and because you out there, you out there acting on your talents instead of on, on the gift of the Holy Spirit, no, no devil know that you ain't got no anointing. <laughs> that devil know that you're not operating under, 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 under the anointing. So he's going to do what? He's going he to run you right out of there. He's going to run you right out of there. I remember T.L. Osborne yeah. talked about that. T.L. Osborne, he was out there ministering. He was a, he was a good minister now. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. T.R. Osborne was a good minister, and he went out and he ministered, and they and and they these people, they wouldn't listen to him. They ran him out of there, and uh, he came back so defeated, so disappointed. And then Miss Daisy, she heard about this preacher who was in town, and she and she heard about the meeting and how the power he was already in. She went to this meeting. T.L. T.L. stayed at home, uh, disappointed. Yeah, sopping and, and so forth and so on. But 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 when she came back from that meeting, she said, "You got to go to this meeting." She said, "You get, you just got to go." She insisted on him going. Amen. And then when she, when he when he when he when she finally persuaded him to go, he went. He said, "Like a thousands of." Voices went off on the inside of him. You can do this. You can do this. And he started saying to himself, I can do this. I can do this. And when he went back the second time, when he went back to when he went back the next time to India, when he went back, he didn't come back defeated. He come back so so on fire. Amen. He came back so on fire. Now he now he he, he training up others now. Before that was during the time of his life, right. you know, 
And he said, and I, and I was at Rainbow during that time. I was at Rainbow during that time. And I was at, I working at the Barrow's Ice Cream. <laughs> he came through there to buy some ice cream. And uh, and I said, I know you. <laughs> you do. <laughs> he said, yep. I said, and he said, I said, you, I said, I said, you go, you, you go back and forth to the nation. He said, yeah, you want to go with me? He asked me that. He said, you want to, I said, I'm in school right now. I can't go right now. But he did ask me, he, T.L. Osborne asked me that I want to go with him. I wish I, I wish I had been ready. I'm ready. I'd have went. I'd have went. Glory to God. Cause so I'm telling you, I'm talking to you this way because I know, I know the gift of the Holy Ghost is to empower you to make a difference in the life of others. Amen. It's to empower you to make a difference in the life of others. Amen. And that was just that was just a, a that, was, that was just a little side trip because it, 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 it just brought it just came back to my remembrance. Amen. How he was how when he didn't understand the Holy Ghost, how he came back defeated. But that's why. But then when he when he when he understood what he was, what was expected of him, he received the gift and he received the anointing. And he received the power. He said, now I can do this. And he went back and he did it. He went back and did it. Amen. He went back and carried out his assignment. It is, it is, it is impossible that a natural ability may be substituted. Amen. It's impossible when you're out there on the battlefield. Because those devils know that you are not operating from a spiritual anointing. You got to understand who you are as a child of God. Because you, see, your ministry got to be proven. And it will be proven out there. <laughs> it will be proven out there. Amen. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, uh, after one after one become a believer, he empowers you to become a witness. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Once you become a believer, he empowers you to become a witness. How is he going to empower you? you well, you got, to, you got to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Like it says in the book of Acts. You got to receive the gift. Amen. When, when this occurred, the talent then become the gift. See, you're operating by talent right now. But once you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you're not operating by the talent. <laughs> you operate from the standpoint of power now. Power. Fire. He said, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, you operate from the standpoint of power and the fire of the Holy Ghost now. Why? Because you have plugged in. You've been plugged in. You, you've, been, you, you've been connected. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. A person may have a, a natural ability administration because of training he has gone through or he has received. But after the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the natural talents are substituted with the what? The supernatural talents. With the supernatural talents. Amen. What do you mean they're substituted with supernatural talents? The gift of the Holy Ghost began to operate. The gift of the Holy Ghost began to rise up within you. Amen. And you began to operate from a standpoint of anointing and power. Not just off of your, your, the talents that you've learned, the things that you've learned. Amen. But by the... And, 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 and then, let me tell you something else when you start operating. You're not operating... You're not always operating by... 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 Uh, notes normally when you are in this position you operate by inspiration amen you 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 you, you operate by the leading of the holy spirit you don't you don't step out and do things on your own because you will get in trouble especially out there you got to you got to know that's why you have to pray you have to when you, when, before you start ministering, when you go to the place, before you start ministering, you need to go on your face. You need to spend some time with the Lord before you even step out of that room. Because you need to understand that this is not playground out here. This is a battlefield. This is a battlefield. 
Amen. So you got you need to you need to spend some time with the Lord. You need to you need to call upon the name of the Lord. You say, Lord, yeah, I, I need instruction. I need direction. I need I need to know which way you want me to go. And the Lord said, I am the way. Walk ye therein. Woo. And all of a sudden, you have inspiration. You have inspiration. You're gonna be led by the Spirit of God. And and, and sometimes, you know what? When we was there last time in, in Pakistan. We, we all sat down at the table just talking and and, uh, and just preparing ourselves for to go out on the field. And uh, there was an angel up here. And, and, I, and, I, and I told my man, I said, look, brother, there's an angel right there, right behind you. Amen. And he's standing up with a, a, a big sword. He's ready for, he's ready for, he's ready for war. Amen. He's ready for war. And when I told them that, it was just a, 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 the whole, all of us became engulfed in the presence of God. All of us that were sitting at the table came and go with the presence of God. Amen. And that happened like practically every day we was there. Because every day we were there, God would give me a God would give me a word of a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, and I would release it, and it would just it would just it, it would just come over us like a blanket, a protection. See. You got to understand, God knows exactly how to reach the people. That's why the gifts of the Holy Spirit is so important. That's why God wants to learn about the gifts, the talents that God give us. Amen. Not the natural talents, but the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Oh, glory to God. And after baptism in the Holy Spirit, this natural talent may be What you call it? It becomes secondary. When you, when you, what I mean by secondary, because it's not something that's going to be the mainstream. It's going to become secondary. You, when you, when you, when you are preparing the people, you, 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 op, you can operate in the natural talent. Then, but when it's time to minister to the people, that's when the, that's when the, the supernatural comes in into play. Amen. That's when the supernatural take over. Amen. And begin to demonstrate the power of the Spirit of God. Amen. So we are going down to page 65. Amen. So the, the purpose, my God, we only have what? We, we still got a few minutes. Still got, still got a few minutes. Amen. So then let's look, let's look here at the book of Ephesians. The purpose of the gifts of the Spirit are listed in, the, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12 through 15. So let's go there and just let's check them out. You you already know what it, you already know what it, what it's going to be talking about. But let's go to it anyway. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse number 12. And it reads. Now we need to back it up. Glory to God. Look at verse number 11. Let's start verse number 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Now this is why he gave them. Verse number 12. For what? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Notice what he said in verse number 13. Till we all come into the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, but by with every wind of doctrine by the slight by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. 
verse number 15, but speaking the truth. the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head of the church, which is the head, even Christ, I mean. Amen. Which is the head, even Christ. Glory to God. See, according to this passage, the purpose of the Holy Spirit are to perfect saints. Amen. To help you to understand your purpose. To equip you for your to carry out your your your, your calling. Amen. To empower you to be effective. And then it's to promote the work of the ministry. It's not to promote you, but you will be promoted. But it's promote the work of the ministry. See, when, what do you mean promote the work of the ministry? You see, when, when, when the people see the gifts in manifestation, like the gifts of healing that I operate in, the, 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 the gift of miracle that I operate in. Amen. See, when the people start getting healed and start being delivered, they are the one they're going to extend. They're the one. Why? Because they see the power. They see the demonstration. They see God working through a human being to carry out his will, his purpose, and his plan. This is why it tells us in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse number 8, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you, so yet you can be a what? A witness. See, what are you doing? You are demonstrating the kingdom of God. What are you doing? Throughout the earth. That's what the gift for. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. That you may demonstrate the kingdom of God throughout the earth. Amen. And so, so, so now he said that the gift is going to promote the work of the ministry. Amen. And then, now, now who's going to promote the work of the ministry? We talk about, we talk about the, uh, we talk about the, the, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Amen. We talk about the fivefold ministry gifts. These are the gifts to the body of Christ. But see, the Holy Ghost is the gift to the body of Christ, to each and every individual. Every individual. If they when they're baptized in the Holy Ghost, they have the gifts available to them. But you got to learn which one that God has specifically placed in your life for you to operate under. Amen. And sometimes, sometimes you find out you got more than one. Sometimes you find out when you got more than two. Amen. All depends on what area that God needs to be. That God want to use you to minister to someone at any given moment. Amen. And so then the next thing is to, to edify. Amen. To edify. Christ and the church in you. Christ in you. And you are part of the church. And when God began to use the gifts to edify when I'm talking about gifts I'm talking about the fivefold ministry gifts they have different ways to edify they have like a like I, like tongues and then interpretation of tongues is to edify teaching edifies amen so God wants to edify the body. He wants to build up the body. Amen. The objective or goal of spiritual gifts are that we will become what? United in faith. Because he said until we come into the unity of the faith. So God wants us to be united in faith so that we can believe him we can, you know, when people are not operating in faith, when they're not, when they're not coming, coming together in a spirit of faith, they're going to depend on whoever walking in faith. 
They're going to start looking at you. They're going to try to pull on you. They're going to try to, to gleam. They're going to try to gleam from you. Instead of them connecting themselves into the spirit where they can also become a, a, a channel for the spirit of God to flow through. And because they don't know that they can, they're going to pull on you. That's why it's so important that we understand the gifts of the spirit. Because God wants you all to understand that you've been given the ability to be a yielded vessel to the spirit of the living God. Amen. Then there's a we're gonna have, we're gonna have to pick back up right here on next on, on next on next time. Amen. Because I'm telling you, right here we're gonna because we see right here he said develop our knowledge of Christ. Develop our knowledge of Christ. See, if you're gonna be if you're gonna be a witness for Christ, then you gotta know what Christ did. You gotta know how how Christ ministered. He wasn't afraid of no one. He wasn't afraid of no sickness getting on him when he started ministering to people. He wasn't afraid of no devil beating him up when he started casting out devils. He wasn't afraid. Why? Because he knew who he was. He was confident in who he was. He was he he wasn't trying to portray himself as somebody else. He knew who he was. And this is what God wants you to come to the point, come to the fact, to, to come to the understanding. He wants you to come to, to understand who you are. Because see, God said that you are more than a conqueror. Amen. God said that the greatest he that is in you than he that is in the world. And God said if 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 any, if, 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 if if God be for you, who can be against you? Oh, 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 oh. oh my brother, so I'm telling you, God is this is gonna be a good lesson. This is gonna this is gonna be a good lesson. Before I go back into the lesson again, I'm gonna do a fast. Before I come back and teach it again. Before next Tuesday, I'm gonna go on a fast. Because when I come back and teach this next Tuesday, I want that that's gonna be impartations. That's going to be impartations. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Oh, I felt that. Mm. That's going to be impartations. Mind the spirit. Amen. Because we're going to start working on the, the, the trinity and the gifts on next time. And we're going to finish up with this one right here, the objective. We're going to finish up on that one also. But we're going to start on the trinity and the what? The gifts. On next time. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you that your word will not return void. I thank you, Father, that you will cause your word, oh God, to begin to develop our spirit because we have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And we have a heart to believe what the Spirit of God is saying. Therefore, we shall be strengthened, we shall be encouraged. And we shall come forth. Though we've been tried by fire, we shall come forth. That's pure gold. Hallelujah, Father. God, I thank you for what you're going to do and what you're doing even now in the spirit realm concerning us and this message. You're preparing our hearts, God, for a great awakening, a great awakening spiritually. And we thank you in Jesus' name. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. For it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, let's go ahead and take our offering. Amen. Those that want to sow a seed, they you can go to my website, LabberbyMinistries.com. Amen. You'll see it right there on your on the website already. It's already been there. It's already there. Go ahead on and use that website there and plant that seed of faith. And let's believe together. Amen. Let's believe together. Glory, glory, glory. Amen, amen. Glory to God. The Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake together, and run it over. Shall men give them to your bosom? Amen. And he said, With the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. God, it's already done. 
God is able to make all grace abound toward you, always have an all sufficiency in all things, do abound to every good work. So open up your heart and sow that seed of faith. You that with us by the end of the end, sow that seed of faith and watch what God do on your behalf. Father, I bless your people now that as we prepare this to receive this gift, Father, I pray that as you speak to their heart, they release that seed, Father, even before it leave their hands, Father. God, you've already released the anointing to lift burdens and destroy yokes and to set the captives free. And your name will be glorified, Father, because they honor you by obeying you in giving. Because ever since the world been, there's always been seed time and harvest. Father, I thank you for the harvest that, that, that shall come forth from the seed that they're sowing. I thank you for it right now, Father, that it shall be a harvest that's going to supernaturally show up in a time in their life where they least expected it, but when they need it the most. God, I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and sow that seed. Amen. If you're here today and you never made Jesus Christ more of your life, I'm going to give you that opportunity to do so right now. You never made Jesus Christ more of your life, I'm going to give you that opportunity right now. Open up your heart. And say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit. And renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sin. I accept what you did for me and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you. For giving your giving up your life so that I might live. Thank you for it. Amen. If you said that prayer, I'm going to pray for you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for everyone that said that prayer, Father. And I thank you, Lord God, that your word will not return void. I thank you, Father, that you're moving in a supernatural way, touching every heart, every soul, every life, Father. That's a, that, 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 Lord God, that you're going to bring about that inner change, Father, by the power of your spirit. I release the angels right now to go to work on their behalf. Father, I thank you that it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Now, if anyone here needs prayer, I'll pray for you right now. Anyone here needs prayer right now? I'll pray for you. No? Then let's pray for these with us by the internet. Father, I pray for those that are with us by the internet right now. I lift them up before you, Father. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would just breathe upon them. Let the power of your spirit begin to rest upon them, lifting burdens and destroying yokes that the enemy has placed upon them so that they will have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to them as we continue on this message on next Tuesday night. God, I thank you and I bless your people. Amen and amen. Amen. I want y'all to join me back here on Sunday morning. I have a word that I believe is going to bless your heart. Sunday morning, and you don't want to miss it. God bless you. We love you. Until then, be blessed. Bye-bye.